Hey everybody, this is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, and today we're about to do Song of Week number 48. And this one's special to me because this is one of the five songs that almost made the cut for my newly released album, Still Electric, under the name Seizures Palace. So, with that said, let's take a look at why this song didn't make it, and uh, we're going to explore the song Seizures. So, let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a quick little sample of the song and listen to a few different parts. Uh, we have an intro. Nice little fade in. And it develops a bit, and then later, drops in. And then, some video gaminess, and then, here we go. So, so I'm spelling out seizures, you can see why it's called seizures, and it has a cool little outro. All right, so that's kind of where the song's at right now. I should mention, uh, this song was almost the last song on the album, Still Electric, and I ended up going with the song, The Engine Ear. I really liked the harp in that song. I thought it really helped cascade the album to a close, which was nice. Um, this one would have been great because I'm spelling out seizures at the end of the day, but I think that as a runner-up to the album, it's still very much worthy of being one of my last five song a weeks before I'm done with this little series. So, with all that said, um, truthfully, I spent about 20 minutes mixing this song just now and then realized I wasn't recording my song a week. So, that said, it doesn't have as much mix issues as it originally did. There's tons of mix issues. Um, and what I did while you guys weren't watching was I re-leveled out the drums a little bit and they're layered. So, if we go in here, you can see it's it looks like a lot of MIDI information. It's really simple, though. It's just a lot of overlapping things. Like, look how many things are overlapping on this one beat here. We have a hi-hat, a shaker, a high snare, a low snare, high clap, low clap, a click, a mid kick, a low kick, and a sub kick. So really just like I went through all these samples and found like what kick had the, my favorite sub or favorite lows or mid lows or mid highs and then same with the snare, same with the clap and layered the crap out of them which is I think kind of how Maddian does his drums and I like Maddian's drums. I think they're very crisp and unique. So um, that's one thing that I try to put into the Seizures Palace style is sort of more crisp drums like Maddian or a nice knocky kick. Um, and kind of more traditional somewhere along the lines of Savant, but he's kind of all over the place with his drums anyway. Um, so what I did was I realized that a lot of these were lined up at the same time. So during the first song a week, five minutes ago or whatever, 20 minutes ago, that didn't work out. I clicked these little side keys here and that will highlight a whole row of drums. And then I slid them around just to kind of fit them in place. Get that sort of like a nice little slow crunch into the sound. And uh, it also avoids the transients lining up at the same time or the peak of the sound, which can give you issues with your limiter later when you're mastering. So uh, also the sub, I brought down a little bit in volume. It was very sub heavy before. Um, there's some strings that have been flattened. You guys already heard those. Um, there were some panning issues on this guy here. So right off the bat here, it was panned like 20 to the left. It should be here. It should be 20 to the right, and here it should be 20 to the left, these guys, and they'll kind of widen out a little bit. But here it should be right in the center or really close, so it's at 1 to the left right now. I'm going to do a quick save. Um, my favorite sound of this whole song is this guy. It kind of started the song. And later when it's not filtered... I just love distorted sounding synthesizers. If you haven't noticed, that's kind of... Kind of part of my styles between really lush orchestral music and really heavily distorted electronic music. Um, the one thing I hadn't touched yet was this guy here. I'd like to go through. Uh, what I did do was correct the EQ a little bit up top. I just wanted a bit more of the high airiness or that sizzle. But let's listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I want to widen this out. Hold on a second. I bought it, didn't I? I bought... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is it going to be in here? Where is it? Hmm. One minute. Under waves. Ba -ba -ba. Here it is. Yeah, the stereo one. Imager, here we go. Shuffler? What's that all about? This has to do with low frequencies, right? Anyway. <laughs> what I'm going to do is ba -ba 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 -ba, get rid of the Haas effect. Uh-oh. Spinning wheel of death. Come on, fingers crossed. Oh. Okay, so that didn't work. The whole thing crashed. Took me a couple minutes to get back <laughs> to where we are right now. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back over to this organ part. I'm not going to worry about the Waves stereo spreader. I'm so tempted to use it. I bought that in Max Bass. Um, admittedly, a buddy of mine way back in the day had a bunch of cracked waves, and I got to try it all out and see what I liked, and those are two of my favorites. So, hey, go legit. Buy, uh, buy the products that you want to support, or buy the products from the companies, rather, that you want to support. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this mix, and I'm going to put it in mono temporarily using the BX Solo free plugin. by the way. You can check side information or mono. Where I find this particularly useful is listening to what other DJs or producers, not DJs, producers and composers put into the sides of their mix. Listening to Deadmau5, for example, versus Savant, extremely different use of how they mix in the sides. So um, it's just kind of cool if you want to go after the sound of your favorite mixing engineer or producer. Uh, it's one quick way to be able to hear a little bit more uh, outside of all the clutter. So we're going mono. And what I'm going to do is I'm listening for, within the super Mord here, like Mord Fustang related, you can tell my style is a huge hybrid of a bunch of different peeps, um, we're going to uh, adjust the width and the delay, more the delay than anything, and uh, try to get the phase alignment to line up a bit. So let's give that a shot. And what I'll do is loop this. I'm going to save as well. Solo it. I'm just going to listen to it for a minute. So here, here's what I'm noticing. Um, it's not really making much of a difference, to be honest. But I think what I'm going to do is put on some mid-side EQ. And just on the mid-channel... <laughs> girlfriend's coming in really sneaky right now. Just on the mid-channel, boost the highs a bit. Because when I went into mono, it sounded like it lost a lot of those highs. That helps. And then... Nice and wide, nice and bright. Let's work on some of these other elements. What's this guy? Here's my thought about this right now. It's a pretty high lead, but I'm trying to get it to dip down really low. And I'm curious if I can bring these up an octave and it'll still sound good. I mean, this sounded kind of cool, but there's already so much low information. Let's hear that layered with whatever part's doing something similar. Could be this guy. Yeah, that really cleaned that up. This guy is just going to be a friggin' nightmare, I think. Hold on a sec. Let's take these here and do the same thing before we get too far ahead. All right. And, and I feel like in some cases, this part here, I might even just delete it altogether. If it's not blending in the way it should, like you have to ask yourself what's left in the frequency spectrum. Sub information is happening up here. Base information is this guy. This one here is kind of like mid, but with a lot of high end clarity still. It's kind of like a lead, also very mid focus. This one here actually has uh, more of that crispness up top. I had to separate that so I didn't say Christmas. And then this here, very muted.
Now it's interesting that this is panned 12 to the left and this is 11 to the right because they're very different frequency ranges. I don't really need to spread them that much. relatively level there's quite a bit going on around 400 hertz okay it's just a really light layer at this point uh, this is the video gamey stuff I think got some long verb on there let's get rid of that altogether also, it feels like it can be compressed a little bit differently. Just really subtly taming those highs. I'm doing very light multiband compression there. <clears throat> Ooh, Haas effect. Okay, so I'm trying to widen this. I am widening it. Let's listen back in mono again. Make sure that, yeah, it's still set mono. And just listen for phase cancellation. Ooh, sounds nasty. There's also this auto pan going on too. I don't think that I have my plugin set up in the right chain at this point. Either way, let's mess with this for a minute. That sounds a little better to me. And again, I think we can go into our mid-side EQ and brighten up the mid a little bit. But not in the same area, preferably, as the organ. a little bit lower and as a result sweep out some of those extreme highs see if there's any mud in the sides that's about all I could find with these headphones on let's listen Sidechain compression sounds weird on it. I want to listen to this here. Listening to these strings. Yeah, I could maybe dial down that reverb a little bit, by which I mean like a lot. There we go. I realize after listening to Savant really closely that. He's really careful with what he applies reverb onto and he uses delays probably maybe more than reverbs and I think the main thing is because on huge club systems reverb can really muddy up the mix really quick so pick like two or three elements uh, where you can barely notice the reverb, pick two or three elements where you can't notice the reverb but it's still there and then a few elements like leads and stuff where you're adding a delay. Um, 
admittedly that balance between reverb and delay is still something I'm working at. And the idea of like adding reverb to your delay or I don't know if you would add delay to reverb. You could do that, but I don't think it would sound as good. Um, that's stuff that I still have to work on. So let's go. We're almost into the vocal part here. So that's actually me. You hear it more there. And then that's the vocal synth by Isotope. Bit of a better blend. It was a bit too sub heavy before, and I want to hear more of my voice than the really uh, affected vocal synth, just so there's more clarity in what I'm saying. Hi hats are buried right now, just a little bit. A little more clear on the hi hats, but the high shelf a little bit. Might be a good time to start listening to frequencies more individually. Sub sounds kind of nice. I feel like the video gamey stuff shouldn't be uh, too prominent in this low area here. Yeah, so that swept it out a little bit. Listen from the same spot. I feel like around here we need to have more of that snare coming through or clap or whatever. So let's try that out. I think this is a good spot for me to go through oh and try to mix in the levels a bit more so that snare's coming through. Delay on that part. This needs better compression. Sub should come after the drums for my usual chains here. It's not a chain, but order. These are very similar in their range.
closer. Still need a little bit more of the snare and clap. I'm gonna go in and mess with the balance individually. Trying to blend in that video game sound a bit. I had something nice on top. Try to bring it down a tiny bit now that it's a little more clear sounding. Just a tiny little bit. Forwarding a bit, this is okay for me. that again. You can see that on the master chain here I have an auto filter. And this Q boost. Oh, I think I got. What was that? That's two. That sounded like garbage. a bit more. 
Merci. I'm pretty happy with the mixing that we've done today on this track. Like I mentioned before, I want to put it through the main speakers and a couple different types of uh, headsets or headphones, so to speak. I don't trust just mixing on one medium, and at the same time, because I'm using a mic, I can't use these speakers while I'm doing the song a week without getting feedback or just some weird delay. So with all that said, again, this was Seizures. It was almost the last track on Still Electric. I thought about maybe saving it for the next album, but I just thought it'd be a really cool idea to give you guys at least one song that almost made it onto the album, but did not. That being said, I had five that didn't quite make it onto the album, and I have five song a weeks left. The issue there is two of those songs are so CPU heavy that I can barely edit them without OBS running at the same time. That's my screen capturing software. So I get a lot of crashing. So I might show you maybe two or three, at least this one, but maybe two or three of the tracks that never made it onto Still Electric. Why I'm not worried about that is because I already have about another 15 songs ready to go for future albums, and I bet I won't use four of them. I might choose two or three of the best. I'm ready to make some new music once the Song Week series is done, once I'm done mixing mixing the band Simcoe. They're amazing. Check them out. By the way, they're from Toronto. I'm mixing their album right now. Um, my Seizures Palace album is recently behind me. So lots of stuff is wrapping up all right now. And afterwards, I'm looking forward to writing some new music and uh, digging into some of the new plugins I've got and really using Serum to the best of my ability. So anyway, this has been Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, doing song week number 48. Next week's 49, then 50, then 51, then 52. That means four weeks left. That means one month left. I hope you guys have been enjoying the series. I will see you next week. Peace. Peace.